To start my discussion, I would like to show the first of three pictures that I found at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. One thing I'd first like to start off with this painting specifically is that the painter's name is Magnus Seller and he was a German-born and German-based painter. Throughout his travels, Zeller spent a lot of time and effort studying to become a better and more skilled painter with an emphasis on the physical form and the different body types he probably witnessed throughout his places that he visited. Now, within the framework of this picture and the painting that I have to the left of my screen, you can see that there's a giant crowd of people standing around one man in the middle. And as you can see, most of the people in the painting surrounding the man, as well as the man himself, are screaming upwards to what looks like heaven for seeking help, salvation, or any kind of phrases that someone up above can help save their suffering. Within the painting, I noticed that there were many people looking up and outstretching their hands toward the ceiling, and I was confused as to what exactly they were looking at. And then as I sat there and looked at it for a little longer, I thought to myself, maybe they believe that Jesus or God or some kind of religious figure is there with them in the room. Now, whether this is a specific type of religion, I think is still up for debate, but it's still important to mention nonetheless. The painting itself also stirs up a lot of uneasy emotions, more specifically when you look at how the people around the man in the middle are acting when they're near him. With their outstretched hands, it looks as if they're almost trying to hold on to this man who has become the physical embodiment of whatever religious figure was prominent in their lives. And honestly, while looking at it, I never really thought that a religious figure could be that prominent in someone's life. And Magna Seller, when I'm thinking about it, he probably witnessed so many things and so much suffering in people's behavior and their experiences and their traumas that influenced how he painted and how he thought about the future whether that be if the world was going to end soon or if another war was going to start. As I did more research into the painter Magnus Seller, I noticed that he was actually heavily influenced and involved with World War I and Adolf Hitler's reign over Germany. Within the painting itself, you can see that Zeller used a lot of in inspiration and influence from the people and family members and strangers he was meeting during this time period of his life. I think the painter Magnus really wanted to show the rest of the world and maybe for example some other countries such as America, France, Australia, different countries all around the world Nonetheless, but he wanted to show how different people's sufferings and experiences can be depicted through art. I believe that he also wanted to start a conversation and create curiosity within the people looking at the painting, even if they weren't directly impacted by the things going on in that time period. This next painting was painted by a man named Pablo Picasso. And he was born in Spain in 1881. Picasso has been widely regarded as a painter that utilizes a lot of different unique and creative shapes in his paintings. I like to think of these shapes as kind of weird or geometric and have a lot of distinct lines and geometry that really enhance the painting when you look deeper into it. Picasso himself has used these shapes in order to creatively express himself in all aspects of his art. The title of this painting by Picasso is inherently about a woman weeping with a handkerchief in her hand. So in the painting, you'll be able to see her crying, weeping, a lot of sadness, and emotion within the painting itself. 
In the picture itself as well, you can see Picasso used a lot of specific colors in order to invoke the emotion within the audience. You can see that she has pink all up on her nose and her mouth is open to show that she's been crying for a long period of time. She also furthermore has a veil or a head covering to show that a close family member or relative or maybe her loved one has died and now she's heartbroken and extremely upset. Now the picture itself can be up for debate about who exactly the woman has lost, but in my opinion, I believe that it could be a man, whether that be a boyfriend in her life or her dad or her grandfather or her husband. It could be many different kind of options, but it the question is open as to who has impacted her so heavily that when they died, it lead her to be weeping. The picture itself also sparked a lot of emotion in me as well because it touched me on how deeply she felt these emotions and how clearly you can see them in the painting. When I was trying to look into this painting a little bit deeper and look at the many perspectives Picasso maybe had while making it, it made me curious as to why this woman was crying and why she had such deeply rooted emotions that you could feel within this painting just by looking at it. There are also so many hidden meanings and metaphors hidden within this painting that you can keep looking at it on and on and on and still find so many different things to try and figure out why Picasso did what he did and what they could possibly mean. When I try to look further into the painting itself, I noticed that maybe this was a person in Picasso's life that inspired the painting. Maybe this woman was actually having these real life emotions with a deceased loved one in her life and Picasso wanted to depict that within a painting and use his own geometric style with these interesting shapes to convey these emotions in a way that still protected the woman's anonymity. And to end off this video with the last picture of the three I planned on showing, this painting is titled The Great Wall of the LA Generation on Fire. Now this is painted by an artist named Judy Baca. While I was in the museum, this painting was extremely wide in length. It took up a whole space on a wall and was very detailed. Now, while it's for sure painted and depicted about the city of LA, it is a little bit unsure whether this fire is being painted as if it's inside the city or if it's just outside the city. Now, the painter, as I noticed when I was looking at it on the wall, taking up the large space, I noticed that the bus itself is extremely long and quite prominent in the background of the painting. There's also about seven or eight people in front of the bus, as well as in front of the fire, holding themselves together arm in arm, as what it looks like a fireman is spraying them with a powerful stream of water. And while I was looking at it, at first I was a little bit confused as to what it all meant, but then as I processed it a little, I finally understood some of the hidden meanings. Maybe there was a little bit of racism and discrimination and acts of violence against other people inside this painting and they were just suffering and they had a lot of loss. So they were standing outside protesting as a way to show that their suffering and anguish wasn't for nothing. Although you can see that the fire is actually on their bodies and it does look like the fireman is spraying the water on them in an attempt to try and save them. As I stood in the museum and just looked at the painting and really analyzed it and thought to myself, I noticed that maybe the reason that these people were standing in front of this fire and their bodies were also on fire was to emphasize and show that their suffering, they, they had a lot of suffer, pain and suffering within their communities. You can see these communities, whether that be people of color, Asian, African American, white, Hispanic, all of these different communities are represented in this painting. This representation is also enhanced by the fire on these bodies in solidarity with the other people in their community suffering. 
I feel like I can also further identify with this painting as my own experience of discrimination is that I'm deaf, I identify as gay, I'm Hispanic, and most people, when they see me, I feel like they're trying to hurt me and put their fire on me. And honestly, I think this is a real world problem that a lot of people can uh, connect with and experience. In the world, there are many, many, many people that discriminate or try to cause harm or force some anguish and suffering onto other people just because that's the way life happens. And within this painting, it's extremely well depicted onto this pain and suffering that a lot of people and minority communities experience. I further believe that in the painting, you can see that the water these firemen are spraying onto the fires of these people is almost as if they're trying to purify or just completely disregard and erase all of the pain and suffering these people in these communities have experienced. What, of, what often happens in real life and in history is that white people in white communities try to erase the cultures that many minority groups have. And you can see parallels with what has happened in history and in this painting as to what these minority communities have experienced. This painting is the last of the three paintings I would be talking about today. I appreciate you all taking the time to watch this, and I hope these paintings leave you with a lot of things to think about and wonder about our world.